Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the Wix online meeting 220. That's a cool number. I like that. Works. All right. Today's September 23rd. We will be into October next meeting. If all things go normally, uh, that's kind of cool. Fall's coming. Rain's coming. I'm down with that. All right. As always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, if you're in the chat, go ahead and say hi. I'd love to see your guys' names pop up. Because I know we have Jacob and Ron out there. I just want to say hi. And anybody else has jumped in since then. What are we doing today? We are doing triage. We will do a design discussion, and then we will do any questions, comments people have. Um, I'm not going to say anything about how long I think this meeting is going to go, because we're just going to go do it. Hi, Jacob. All right, one, two, three, triage. Bob, ready? Apparently. All right, Bob, yours. <laughs> what? Top two are yours. <laughs> no, let me. They're, they're, we're just postponing. Okay. I mean, I've I've investigated um, the middle one. Okay. But I have not. Um, you know, I actually started to fix the middle one, but um, it turned into far more work than I was able to uh, consider. Okay. Are we going to leave these on triage? Yep. All right. Sean, you've done an admiral job trying to move this thing forward, um, but I don't think the commenter is choosing to uh, engage in the design challenges that you're trying to get him to consider. Well, to right? be fair, we just said, you know, we're closing your, your bug report, and if you want to do a feature, open the feature. Uh, no one volunteered to do the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm, so what are we – Sean's trying to get him to <laughs> think through the problems as opposed to say, just do this. It's like, well, yeah, but what about the implications of said choice? Right, Sean? Am I reading that correctly? Well, yeah, but I'm I'm also trying to figure out what exactly he wants. Like he's saying, just make it configurable, and it's like, where, when do you want to configure it? Right. So, like, I don't see much value in what he put in this issue compared to what he put in his other issue. Like, I don't think he's really added anything. I, uh, yep. Again, Agreed. we just we. <laughs> But that's what we asked him to do. Fair. Do we need to mark this with whip and then um, go from there? Basically say, go right down the, the stop and think about the ups and downs of this feature. Pros and cons. I don't know why I said ups and downs. That was weird. Um, Pros and cons? That's essentially I mean, what this is, right? I guess the reason that I didn't create this issue is that I wanted someone to actually come out and say what they wanted to do. Like, we can... Well, the, the thing is, what they want to happen is for, you know, antivirus to not collapse. And, you know, the truth is they don't... Most people don't care about the reboot thing. Very few, even fewer people care about the, the power loss scenario. So, you know, the fact that this is what burn does is like, well, you know, I don't care because the high order bit is that their bundles crash. So, you know, uh, sorry, this is a scenario. Th this issue is something that, that, you know, no outsider is, you know, you, you have to be well tuned to everything that burn is trying to accomplish to talk about it. Otherwise what you get is, Oh, it should just be configurable. Well, yeah, this isn't something I don't think anyone outside of, of, you know, people who have attended one of these online meetings uh, are, are going to be able to articulate and respond to this, you know, these kind of questions. Uh, perhaps it's elitist of me, but I think we're expecting too much. So what do we do instead? 
I mean, to Sean's point, I mean, he clearly just wants to work. Yeah. And nothing else. Sure. Right. And we'll be back later when, if he ever has a reboot, and be like, hey, it didn't restart after reboot. You should make that work, too. And be like, well, remember that choice you made earlier? That choice prevented this choice from working. And he's going to be like, well, I want both. And we're like, well, you can't have both. That's the problem we're stuck with here. Yeah, I guess I want someone to come out and say, I want it to do this. Like, I, I want it. I don't want it to come up during after reboot or power loss. I And I understand that. Like, I want someone to come out and say that. Otherwise, I think we should just it's close as a duplicate of the other one because it's basically just telling us I want it to work and if that's all they're going to say I don't really see why we'd keep it open what do we have um, what other issues do we have that articulate this well I mean, if, if we have a canonical one let's yeah I'm, I'm perfectly fine with um, I I, we, mean, we have one of them that's closed as external saying, yeah, we're doing it this way because that's what we're supposed to be doing, and it's up to the antivirus to not block us. That's the one that I would close as a duplicate of. And sign your bundle, because that seems to help almost everybody out there. It, I don't think it helps with specific vendors. Some of them don't care whether it's signed or not. It's just going to block it. Yeah, but why don't we? This should be a bigger problem then. Um, yeah, but a lot of them, I mean, consumer and enterprise are very different here. Yeah. You know, IT, I, IT people, you know, really love their their power, so they'll crank up all the knobs, or as many as they can get away with. Um. Consumer has to be a little bit more, you know, reasonable. But isn't it a sign this and then trust this company? I mean, that's the, in those cases where you want to be highly draconian about your systems, you're like, I, I want to lock everything down. It's like, great. But you want to install the software? Yes. Then enable that bit or, you know, trust this signature. Well, yeah, and that's, you know, a, an IT, power-hungry IT person might do that. Mm -hmm. But that's not a, you know, consumer. All right. I mean, the, the only alternative is, well, one other alternative that I thought was, like, we could add another command line switch, because I don't think you can do this at build time. But you could add a command line switch, just like, yeah, don't write run once, and then the end user will be responsible for, well, I set that command line switch, and therefore... I will have to, if there's a restart, I will have to run the install again, again, passing that switch again. It's like more configuration and burn on the command line. Well, you'd, you'd have to persist it. You'd have to keep that. Why? Like or when you want uninstall? to uninstall. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's a handy thing for a support team to be able to yeah, you know, tell a customer, but it's not gonna it's not gonna address the concerns. Yeah, I, I, I think Jacob's right. I think if you submit your if you sign your package and you submit to be whitelisted, I think you get through these things. I mean, because we've had problems like this with um burn and such, and I went through all the vendors that were listed and basically said, Here's a burn engine, you guys should trust this and a whole class of people just stopped complaining. I was like, well, I guess that worked to some degree. Um, yeah. So they need to do the same thing with their software. I mean, I guess it comes down to they didn't really fill in the template here because they didn't say what they want the new feature to do. So there's, I don't know what's actionable here. The action is for us to design it. Yeah. That's what he wrote. We, I, doesn't help again, me, this but, is yeah. if if we have a canonical issue that we can dupe this against. Yes, but I agree. There, there's not value add here. Um, but I don't think I, I don't know of one that, you know, is specifically 
talking about our use of run ones. There's plenty of, of you know. Well, there were two of them. <laughs> to what? It, if you go to this guy's old bug that he created that we went over last time, that's I should have linked to. I don't have a link in here. Let me see. Yeah, you'd have to like mm -hmm. look in closed issues or something. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to try to do that real quick. Well, I did that. I mean, trend micro antivirus blocks use of run ones. Yeah, that's the canonical one. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't consider that. Oh, I, want, I don't want a sending, right? Oh, all these screen reader things. Um, that one, this one, right? Yeah, there it is. So like I feel like my response in this one is actually much better than what yeah. we yeah. have in the other one. Yeah. Hence why yep. I didn't find the trend micro one to be key. I agree. Well, I have I have a response at the bottom of the trend micro run as well that explains what we're doing and why it's not our problem. It's not our fault. Well, of course it's our fault. We're using run ones. The fact is run once is triggering. There are things we can do and you know, we we if we think that it is serious enough, again, I think we, again, people on this call kind of thing, are the ones that need to, you know, well, first do what you did, John, and, you know, write down the problems and what we're trying to solve. And then discuss alternatives, discuss, you know. And, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I, I mean, I agree with Jacob. For the most part, you sign your bundle, you, you send it for whitelisting, you're, you're, you're safe, you're good. You're as good as you can get. That said, there are definitely things we could do differently than run once if it's so triggering. But, you know, it's really difficult to <sighs> we have come up with these different designs. We have to implement them. Frankly, we need to test them, you know, like in the wild. So, again, I understand the, the, I understand the problems. Um, if run once is, is blocking so many people, then, you know, then maybe we should consider being the people to do the work to, you know, discover solutions. Um, well, I, I don't really agree with that because if we go some other way, then malware is going to do that too. And they're just going to block that as well. Well, they're, they probably already are, but I'm not suggesting that we come up with different ways of, of hacking what we do. I, I mentioned this last time. We could say not write run once until we know we're going to reboot. They're going to block us then. They might very well block us then. They're yes. going to block us then. So well, that's, I mean, I would agree that I would argue that's worse because now you've already installed everything, but then. Well, you no, got you're blocked in, at the end because now you're and now you're in a weird state where you didn't finish everything you were supposed to. Well, I was mostly thinking about mid-chain reboots because that's kind of the you know that's the only thing we care about, right? But again, but, this is the we 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 can talk about this stuff if it's important enough, and that's a, my question. There are definitely things we could we could consider and you know debate back and forth. Of different ways of of handling this this issue. I don't I don't I don't think it's important enough to do that. To be clear, I think that signing and whitelisting pretty much solves the problem. That said, there are things we could you know there are alternatives. There are are dials we can you know. 
whatever. There are things we could do. It absolutely requires a bunch of of you know talking and thinking and designing and testing and 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 that's where I come back to. I don't think it's a big enough problem to do that work. I'm also not confident that we're going to get another solution that works. I take yeah, that. We could install a service. And that would do well, it. That, that <laughs> doesn't that doesn't help with per user. Oh, no, you're right. It would require elevation for per user. <laughs> I think the answer here is two. Is and is, sorry, is what I've highlighted here. Number two, work with the antivirus to get them to stop blocking your burn, such as reporting your bundle as a false positive. Um, sign it is probably part of that as well. Um, I mean, if we want to leave it open, I'd rather reopen this one. Because if people search for the open one, I'd rather see them pointing that I pointed it to the original one and then those three options. Or I guess I can copy what I wrote here into the other one. Or we could just change the title of, of 5482. Yeah, I, I think we need to just pick somewhere, I don't know which one, one of them to collect all the information and point everything at that one and be like, look, here's everything in one spot. Okay. And anyone that wants to tackle this has to solve all these problems. Yeah. Yes. And that so don't show up and say, I want this solved. It's like, fine. We'll dupe it against that thing that says you have to solve all these problems. Go. If you don't want to solve all the problems, we don't need anything. And probably the answer is, from all of the, um, the subjective reports that we've had, signing and reporting false positive works. Right? Like that seems to be the answer generally. It has made generally. problems. It has made problems disappear before. And it's I don't not know a perfect if... solution. It doesn't solve the problem of, of not being able to sign during development, for example. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. Antivirus people drive me crazy, so. This kind of stuff. Yep. Sign it. Recognize it. Whitelist it. I think that's it. Which is what Sean's basically written here. Well, parts of this. It's, it's, it's spread about. I think we just need to collect all those things, pick one of the issues to be the answer, and put it on that. And maybe it's this one. Maybe it's go up here into his part and say, and here are the three things for this feature request to be implemented. Here are the three, five, six things that have to be balanced. It's more work than I want to do, but Bob's probably right. Uh, is that He's not going to think all through all those things, so we have to put them somewhere. I will create a new issue and combining what I can find and just mark it whip required. Yeah, whip required. And basically point out that this feature request is just a bug report again. It's not walking through any of the challenges. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. I, I will open a new issue and close this one. Yeah, yeah. Close this one against that one. Yep. Okay. It just comes down to it's a harder problem than people realize. All right. So, going back to the thing for today, which I think is, I'm not going to say it. This will be a, a discussion. Let's go have this discussion. Um, what to do with canceled XE packages during rollback? And Sean, I'm going to have you point on this because I don't remember. 
I, I have fuzzy things in my head of remembering them, but I tend to be wrong when I do that. So I'm just going to let you take uh, <laughs> the, the correct end point on this one. I guess um, there's this link. Where's the chat? Let me send you a link to the Wix devs email. Ah, OK. I should have put that in here. Will this open? I can't click on that. Um, Why not? Uh, OK. <laughs> it's, it's, it's making me wait. So I guess it starts at the bug for 5950 is specifically that the rollback action isn't executed for an exe package when it fails. Right. The rollback action would be executed if a later package failed. So right. then I was asking whether we should never schedule rollback actions for exe packages. And yeah. Yeah, I think I think we should do a rollback package for exes. I think that's the right thing to do. And then I Right. So then the debate comes down to if an XE package fails, should we turn around and try to uninstall it? So right? I think we should. Right. And and then your concern was can XEs handle that? Right? What happens to an XE if it's if we uninstall it and it's not installed? And right. the more I've thought about it, the more I'm like, well, we're going to ignore the error code on it anyway, right? So yeah, let's just do it. Because <laughs> I guess like, it happens to then trigger an install. Yeah, but oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, please don't do that, Xes. Don't trigger an install during uninstall. Um, I mean, I think we have to assume that it doesn't uninstall, and if it doesn't, then that's their fault. <laughs> yeah. It's basically a look. If someone runs uninstall on your XE and you're not installed, do something intelligent. I mean, I guess we should not schedule the rollback if the XE package doesn't. If it's yeah, if it doesn't support uninstall. Well, yeah. If we don't know how to uninstall it, we're not going to schedule for uninstall. Yeah, totally. Yeah. If there's no uninstall command, you're like, well, what would we run? Mm, we're not going to make something up. So, that's that whole uninstall command. It's basically the same as permanent. Lack of uninstall command is basically the same as permanent. So then the next problem is is that um, if we did this, there's a problem where if the user cancels an XE package, then we just abandon waiting for the process to complete and we just keep on going. Or we, you know, we, yeah, we keep on going and probably stop and start rolling back. So if they cancel and we want to roll back, then we actually need to wait for the original operation to complete before we trigger the uninstall. Mm -hmm. But I guess the question is, should we always start blocking? And if they cancel, just wait for it to complete? Or should there be a special thing that you opt into that would enable you to roll back. Yeah, th this one's hard because what if you cancel because it's hung? I mean, or, I don't know. <laughs> I guess you go kill the process. Yeah. Because uh, we could kill the process too, but that's always really sketchy in, in install. You're like, hey, you were doing whatever you were doing and we killed you because user hit cancel. I hope your state was in a good place. Uh, Want to try to uninstall now? Um, yeah, I didn't really think about the hung part. That would make it hard. Yeah, you just get into a timeout, right? Like cancel and then wait this long for that install to complete. But I mean, you know, it could be a, di a database install or some other very large install that is known to take many minutes and the user gets bored, they hit cancel. Where do we leave them? Now, current behavior is not great either. Like, well, we will just ignore that, start rolling back everything else, and that thing will presumably eventually finish. 
and then it ends up being left behind. So is the can you, the MSI get into a state where you can't cancel it and it's just oh. hung? Oh yeah, custom action could just go out to lunch. So it's not really any different from that, really, no. right? Mm -hmm. Not yeah, XEs and MSIs aren't really different in that way. Do we Except time out we, today? Do we have a timeout today? I doubt. No, I don't think we have any okay. timeouts. Yeah, we have no way of in burn today of doing any kind of timeouts today. Um, yeah, you're right. A custom action in MSI could hang and then never come back. The difference is that there are outside of custom actions tighter windows that you can't get to MSI to you know, respond. And properly written custom actions can also be cancelable. XEs, without a protocol, we don't have any way of telling them, hey, by the way, we know you're going to run for another six hours, but it would be great if you could stop now. We don't have any way of doing that. So it's a lot trickier. We get into a thing where, like, all right, user hits cancel, and we're like, all right, we're going to wait for this current process to finish canceling. And then... Yeah, this is what, like what Jacob said, you, the user clicks cancel again. We're like, well, we were giving it some time. Do you really want to go off and kill it? Might leave you in an unstable state, which I don't know how a user is supposed to do with that statement. And they'd be like, yes, kill it. And then we're like, all right, cool. We'll kill that process and roll back. Um, I guess maybe add an option, like you can cancel or you can like cancel and kill. Terminate, yeah. <laughs> cancel with extreme prejudice. You should Carson daily it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, earlier joke. That won't make any sense in recording, will it? I don't think it will. All right. Um, <laughs> yes, cancel with um, without abandon. Yeah, then we just, <laughs> we just push the problem to the BA which honestly is a better place to put it anyway. Um, they'll at least have a user interaction that they could decide. Well, I click cancel and it's been this long. So let's send the really cancel now. Well, I guess there's three kind of or abandon. cancels. Yeah, there's also the abandon one, right? Yeah, cancel and abandon, which is what it does today. Right. And there's cancel without abandon and cancel and terminate or kill or whatever. So I think the failure is pretty easy if it fails. If the XE package fails, we can run it on rollback. I think the cancel requires potentially this extra functionality. And, I, and I, the more I think about it, the less I think the engine should be able to do it, because then we're just going to get into this plethora of configuration options. Right? It's just going to be all kinds of different timeouts, and then you're going to end up having fallbacks. You're like, well, do this one first after this many minutes, and then do this one after this many minutes. Yeah, it's like, it could just be complex, and it could be different, and it'll be different for every potential every package, and so on and so forth. Um, Terminating the MSI process is really messy because they end up leaving a bunch of state. And then when you run them again, they get really they get really huffy about it. Isn't that an interrupted install? Yeah, that whole interrupted install thing. Yeah, that's nasty. Mm -hmm. Well, do we have to offer those advanced cancel options on the all packages or just XE packages? No, we don't have to offer it on all packages. Um, I was just thinking through the, I guess the package type will have to interpret the cancel and be like, oh, you said cancel with abandon? No, it's an MSI. I guess you can abandon MSI, but um, no, you can't because we're using the MSI API. Ah, can you? Anyway, yeah, you just have to, 
there are implications to think through of what happens when someone sends one of those other cancel messages while an MSU or an XE or an MSI or a patch, you know, whatever is running. These three different options. But yeah, I think it, it's something like that so that we don't, so that the burn engine doesn't have to have tremendous amounts of configuration to basically offer all these options. Because I do think, Sean, you enumerated all of the possible options. All three of them. Yeah. Cancel wait, cancel um, and abandon, cancel and terminate. And today we have cancel and wait, right? No, we no. have cancel and abandon. Sorry, we have cancel yeah. and abandon. That's what we have today. At least for XEs. I bet for MSIs we wait. Well, yeah, we just send the cancel to the MSI. Yeah, so it's can MSIs are cancel and wait, where XEs are cancel and abandon. Well, I guess it's a little more complicated than that, because basically, like if it's the burn protocol, I think it'll just send the cancel. Sorry. You're right. Uh, does that not wait? I don't know what the burn protocol does. I'm, I would assume that it sends the cancel message and then it keeps on processing messages until it exits. Right. So it does a wait too. So if you have a protocol, yeah, anyway. These are all the things I have to get sorted out with this thing. So um, I think it would be fine if a separate issue is open on that cancel thing. On, on the, the separate cancel maneuvers versus, well, it's up, I don't know, whichever way to go. Whether it's a separate issue for all the cancel options versus the, hey, if you hit cancel, then we should try to uninstall this XC. So one issue would be doing the rollback if it fails. Right. And the other issue would be fixing the issue that we just created where if it failed because it was canceled, then there's a good chance that the rollback's not going to work because it's still running. The install's still running. Yep. Okay. System backup. Well, burn already does a system restore at the beginning of its chain um, for that. and. Definitely not going to tell the user before installing a bundle. Hey, please, sit, you know, please run a backup of your entire computer. That's kind of crazy. Oh, that's turned off on Windows 10. Oh, really? They finally gave up on System Restore? Yeah, as far as I can tell, it's off by default now. <laughs> I turn it off on all my machines because it never worked well enough. Um, so, yay! All those years of dealing with this thing, they finally just decide it's not really working. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise! Surprise! God, so many taxes. Anyway, anyway, um, I think that's the way through this, Sean. Um, I, I think that is all the way through. I, I don't know. One issue, two issues, you know, whatever is the most direct way, most logical way to organize it. Um, and if it's, you know, too big, it's like, yeah, we could put it in future burn if we don't want to do it in number one four. Right, and <laughs> Amber one four. <laughs> Guess what I'm working on? Wix uh four. I, mean, I, th I think doing scheduling the rollback should be easy. Right. And doesn't require a whip, but the other one probably does. Right. But you pointed out that changing the scheduling may expose us to this problem where we're gonna to try to cancel something that's still running. Or you're gonna be able to tell no that no 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 because you're no because it's not gonna be failed in that case. Sorry. Cancel is a completely separate code, right? Well, needs to be. I yeah I'm not, I'm not confident on that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not either. My guess would be the code doesn't know the difference. Probably not. When it 
goes to try to f figure out whether it should roll it back or not. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I fall back to the whatever ends up being most logical, given the the code, the appropriate number of um, issues to open, things to write, and then um, whether it fits in Wix or not. Yeah. T totally fine. Cool? Yeah. All right. I think I can check this off. I did not expect the cancel feature to come out of this. It's an interesting concept of cancel. Cancel wait, cancel band, and cancel terminate. It's an interesting, interesting, yeah, makes sense, though. All right, moving on. Anything else people want to talk about? Ron totally got me to bite on his system restore thing, but I learned something today that system restore is off in Windows 10 uh, by default. That's interesting. I didn't know that. So we have a new build out for 3.14? 314, yes, we had two of them because I messed up one of them. So we have a new 314 build out with the discussions from last week to help solve the ARM ARM issues on Windows 11. Is it ARM 64? Is that the correct thing to say? ARM 64 on Windows 11? It's X64 on ARM 64 Windows. Yeah, okay, I totally got that wrong. Anyway, it's an cool. ARM in... in it's an ARM-induced error on Windows 11. That's true. Because the existence of ARM and Windows 11, this thing needed to be tackled. Um, yes, that build is out with a couple of other related things that Sean um, hooked in there. Um, we'll see if we get any feedback from the .NET team that was interested in all of that. I haven't heard anything. Have you, Sean? No. I hope but just... they were probably using Eric's private build to test it anyway, so probably. So I'm, I'm we'll just hope they quietly work, and then maybe we'll hear something uh, next week or something. But yes, that's out. Um, anything going on out there? Jacob and Ron have been. Nice big thing. It looks nice. The chat looks great with all the colors and everything. Um, I don't have anything else. You guys got anything else? No. Nope. Nope. Two weeks will be October. October 7. Sounds right. I think that's a regular normal kind of day. So we'll be back in October. October 7th. Kicking it off. That should work out just fine. Um. If you guys don't have anything else, I think I've stalled long enough for Jacob or Ron to jump in. So we're going to call it uh, a meeting. Good stuff. We'll be back in two weeks, which is October 7th. Same time, same place. And until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.